On March 13, 2018, employees from a tree cutting service discovered a human skull in a wooded area where they were working, alongside Champion Hill Road in Bolton, Mississippi. Officers from the Hines County Sheriff's Office found additional skeletal remains in the area belonging to the same person. It could not be determined how the person lost their life, but it was noted that the remains were partially burned. What investigators could determine was that the remains belonged to a black woman that was likely under the age of 30. Unfortunately, not much else could be learned because only a partial set of remains were found. After investigators exhausted traditional methods of identifying the woman, they were no closer in doing so, and the case went cold. In 2021, the Mississippi State Medical Examiner's Office partnered with Othram Lab to finally identify the woman. Othram used forensic-grade genome sequencing to develop a comprehensive geological profile from the burned skeletal remains. The condition of the remains necessitated additional processing steps to make DNA suitable for advanced testing. After multiple rounds of testing, Othram scientists were able to build the necessary profile to enable genealogical search. The costs associated with the case were funded by Mississippi native and philanthropist Carla Davis. In addition, Carla Davis led the genealogical research to search for possible family members of the unidentified woman. Investigative leads were returned to law enforcement, and in a follow-up investigation paired with rapid familial testing, the unknown woman's relationship to a close family relative was established. The investigation confirmed in May of 2022 that the unknown woman was Juanita Diane Roxy Coleman. Juanita was reported missing in NamUs and also the Charlie Project. According to the Charlie Project, Coleman was last seen in the 1500 block of Diane Drive in Jackson, Mississippi on April 1, 2016. She would have been 19 years old at the time of her disappearance. Her family heard rumors that she was shot in the face, but there was no confirmation or additional details available at the time. An investigation into who took her life continues. Anyone with information about Juanita should contact Detective Sharon Jordan of Jackson Police Department, Special Victims Unit, at this number. Skeletal remains were found in June of 1974 in an area known as the Burnt Bridges along the A1A Bridge in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The remains belonged to a young white woman. Detectives at the time believed she was between the ages of 15 and 20. It could not be determined how she lost her life, but it was noted that she was found tied up in the mangroves to a tree. Recently, DNA that was obtained from the remains were entered into the National Database for Unidentified Persons, but they could not find a match. It wasn't until November 2021 that genealogy tests were performed on the remains by scientists working at Othram Lab. This resulted in the victim's identification. In June of 2022, she was identified as Susan Gale Poole. Susan was born on February 12, 1957, and lived in a trailer park in North Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Susan was 15 years old when she disappeared, just before Christmas in 1972. Her family did report her missing back then. Susan's sister Patty had this to say about the identification. I had always hoped she would come back. The search is finally over. Investigators believe Susan was a victim of Gerard Schaefer. Schaefer committed many similar crimes. He lived in the same area as Susan back in 1974. He got arrested for kidnapping two girls, taking them out on the A1A bridge and tying them up in mangroves. Schaefer was known to pick up girls who were hitchhiking. Friends of Susan told investigators that Susan often hitchhiked. He was convicted for his crimes and his life was taken in prison in 1996. While detectives believe he is responsible for what happened to Susan, they do not have any physical evidence linking him to the crime. Susan's mother is still alive and is now in her 90s. She has also been informed about the identification. Tipsters may remain anonymous by calling Crime Stoppers at 800-458-TIPS. In March of 1976, human remains belonging to an unknown man were found in the Cape Fear River near the CPNL plant intake valve near Monker in Chatham County, North Carolina. Investigators thought that the unknown man might have been put in the water upstream via the Hall River or Deep River. The man had appeared to have an athletic build and was likely in good health before he lost his life. When his head and hands could not be found with a body, Chatham County deputies subsequently opened a homicide investigation into the case. With few clues to the man's identity, the case went cold. The unknown man, eventually known as Chatham County John Doe, 
was estimated to be a Caucasian male, likely between 25 and 35 years old. He was 5 foot 9 inches tall and weighed 150 pounds. The unidentified person's case was entered into NamUs in 2008, but traditional forensic methods did not yield answers on the case. Although early investigation into the case was hampered by a lack of basic information or viable clues, members of the Chatham County Sheriff's Office remained open to new methods and opportunities to identify the deceased. Chatham County Sheriff's Office investigator Ricky Culberson eventually connected with the North Carolina Unidentified Project, an initiative that was co-founded by Dr. Ann Ross and Leslie Kaufman in 2020 to raise and provide funding or assistance with unidentified persons cases. In the fall of 2021, Chatham County Sheriff's Office and the North Carolina Unidentified Project partnered with Othram to use forensic-grade genome sequencing to develop a comprehensive genealogical profile from the skeletal remains of the Chatham County John Doe. After building the profile, Othram scientists returned the profile and the investigation continued. Leslie Kaufman, working with Chatham County Sheriff's Office, used genetic genealogy to develop investigative leads pointing to the unknown man's identity. The leads were confirmed through additional testing and established Chatham County John Doe's true identity as Jimmy Mack Brooks. Jimmy was born on February 16, 1950 in Allegheny County, North Carolina. He would have been 26 years old at the time his life was taken. He was an Army veteran and had been stationed in Fort Bragg and had left the service only a few years before his demise. The Chatham County Sheriff's Office is now asking members of the public to share what they know regarding the life and death of Jimmy Mack Brooks. Investigators say a single small detail could potentially lead to the next big leap in the case. Anyone with information about this case is asked to contact the Chatham County Sheriff's Office at this number.